Hello and welcome to another episode of Stuff in Front of My Little uh, Amplifier Theater. Today's lesson is uh, about stomp switches and uh, their insides and uh, how they function and uh, what can go wrong with them. Uh, you can see we have uh, a couple of examples here. Here's your standard uh, three-pole double throw uh, stomp switch that is so popular. Here's the uh, X-wing switch that uh, many of us use and that were used for many years. Uh, this is a momentary uh, example of the same switch. This one latches, so it switches. You press it once, it's in one position. Press it again, it's in the other. This one uh, returns to a basic position uh, and only switches uh, over when you press it. Here we have some examples of uh, actuators. This is something I bought this from uh, from Small Bear Electronics uh, from my buddy Steve Daniels. This uh, is something that you can use to uh, make your own uh, micro switches. This will uh, attach to the chassis of the box. There's a little spring here and of course when you push it the spring gets moved down. Uh, what I've done here is I've uh, already prepared one and I've epoxied a little bit of uh, aluminum tubing to it and uh, when I press the uh, spring moves down and what you can do is you can uh, mount a little uh, switch. This is a double pull double throw switch. A little it's a uh, hesitate to call it stomp because I think if you stomped you'd break it but uh, it's a switch that can mount on your printed circuit board they're not that expensive and uh, you can basically epoxy it to the tube and uh, it is uh, it forms a, a true bypass switch uh, with a much much smaller footprint than uh, than this would be um, sometimes that comes in handy but uh, on to the main lesson. What's inside of a switch? Well, I've prepared these by pulling the tabs up a little bit and we'll take a look inside at the anatomy of the basic stomp switch. Here we have a um, moving piston. Inside there is a spring skinny side in and a little uh, plunger that you can see here comes out let's put it back in the moving part uh, this just grips on to the chassis with some tabs you can pry them up and then uh, you can put this back on the chassis and squeeze them shut with the appropriate needle nose pliers more about that in a moment here we have a little seesaw mechanism. It's made out of plastic. And uh, you can see there's some little plastic parts on the end of that which move the rocker contacts in the inside. Uh, what you maybe can't see is there's a, a dab of grease on this. And here we get to the uh, critical part. Inside you'll see these uh, rocker contacts. Let's uh, take them out. They're not attached. They're a little the little uh, banana shaped pieces of metal that uh, pivot on a uh, uh, on a middle point and um, the <coughs> the little plastic bits here will push one side down or the other side down. So this rocks back and forth and alternates which side it pushes down. On the inside, uh, yeah, maybe now you can see, we have here the contacts which form the inner portion of the solder lugs. So, uh, let's see, if, there we go, okay. So these little rocker contacts sit on top of this little pivot point in the middle and are 
pushed in one direction to make contact with one side or with the other side. Now, one of the things that uh, frequently happens with hobbyists is that they may be applying way too much heat when they go to solder waters, wires to these. Um, now, what you probably can't see is that there's usually a little dab of grease uh, on both this plastic part and on the rocker contact. And when you apply way too much heat to the solder tabs, solder lugs, that heat is transferred into the rocker contact and sometimes if there's too much grease on it, the grease will liquefy and it will spread across the uh, the hole of the contact and in fact uh, insulate it rather than allow it to make contact with the uh, inner part of the uh, solder lugs. So you end up with a non-functional switch. The switch came out great from the factory, but you've made it inoperable by applying too much heat. Now, does this mean the switch is no good anymore? Certainly not. What you can do is you can just simply take a cotton swab, clean off the grease, oops, reseat the rocker contact. Let's get that in there. Come on. Reseat them both, of course, making sure that the contacts are clean, and then simply reassemble the switch all the parts in the right place and here let's close this up and lo and behold there we have a rehabilitated stomp switch. Easy, isn't it? Uh, I've done it many times and works like a charm. Uh, the best thing, of course, is not to uh, overheat the solder uh, lugs in the first place. Here we have, uh, as I said before, a momentary switch. If I take it apart, you'll see it's the same deal. And you got the uh, wide on the outside, skinny on the inside, funnel-shaped uh, spring and the little the little plunger that it fits around come on um, the rocker mechanism is no different but the big difference is on the inside let's take a look at the contacts here and like those banana shaped contacts from the uh, the latching switch these ones as you can see have a very distinctive shape and what happens is this bump prevents the little plastic nub from pushing the contact down all the way it forces the little plastic nub back that's how it becomes momentary one side behaves exactly like uh, the other kind of uh, latching switch um, but another side simply because of how this is shaped okay uh, becomes a, makes it a momentary switch. Now, if you want, although there are limits to this, you can turn one kind of switch into another. I accidentally bought a bunch of momentary switches. Uh, I was distracted by the good price and neglected to see what kind they were. Um, but I bought several, and uh, when I opened them up, I realized these are uh, easily convertible into the other kind of switch. And uh, you can just take your needle nose and flatten them out, shape them a little bit so they have that banana shape, and uh, reseat them back in. Come on, let's do this right here. Reseat them back into place and uh, reassemble, and uh, you will have a, uh, a latching stop switch. I'm going to put this one back to work.
Come on. Don't embarrass me in front of people. There we go. Yeah, this is the stuff they fix in the editing room, isn't it? Well, in any event, once the camera's off, I'll fix it. Are you sure?